Okay, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love online every Saturday at 12.15 p.m. PST. And we are going to Galatians chapter 5. And one thing the Lord is showing me is that we make too many allowances. We walk with the Lord, we talk with the Lord, we waddle with the Lord, we quack with the Lord. We call ourselves praying to the Lord, but we won't obey him in a lot of areas. We have our little pet peeves and our little pet areas where we make allowances just because. So I want to let you know how God feels about those allowances. And he loves us. You know, this is for the body of Christ. How can he tell you to walk in the spirit unless you're filled with the spirit? So this is obviously to the body of Christ. So for those of you believers who aren't filled with the Holy Spirit, when we get through, we're going to pray that you get filled. And for those of you who are not yet believers, who might want to give your heart to the Lord, and I ask you to please consider that strongly, we are definitely going to pray that the Lord give you the faith to commit your lives to him, to his love, to his power, to his protection, and the list goes on. So reading at um, starting, this is Galatians chapter five, starting at verse 18, which is the verse he told me to start with. We're going to read. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Now, let me say this real quick before I go any further. For some of you men out there in YouTube land, <laughs> I know a lot of times with all of the things in the in the airways, all of the all of the lustful commercials and the suggestive advertisements and the things, the movies that are on TV. Sometimes, you, you know, you think you're watching a wholesome movie and next thing you know, you're like, oh, wait a minute, what are they doing? <laughs> so, but some of you have made allowances and you may not do it on TV, but you might get on the internet and find some porn spots where you can massage different parts of your anatomy. God sees that. He sees why. See, it's not so much what you do with your anatomy. Your body is your body. I ain't dealing with that. What I'm dealing with is where you're getting your stimulus. Because Jesus says, if you look on a woman, and that goes both ways, male or female. If you look on a woman or you look on a man, Whatever you're looking at, if you're lusting after it and you're basking in that lust, baby, guess what? You have already committed adultery and or fornication with that person. You've already done it. You've already committed the dastardly deed. So looking and getting turned on but not doing does not mean it's not done. So moving right along, I just had to throw that in. And for some of you who are struggling, there's a scripture that says, do not make provisions to fulfill the lust of the flesh. So that means you need to get to the point where you uh, 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 work your device where you can't even access those places. You can't access those sites. You've got to do that. Or else you will never get the victory as long as you leave that door cracked. As long as you leave the lock off, you'll always be tempted to open that door. Mm, think about that. All right, now let's go to verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. I already read it. Verse 20, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies. Now, a lot of people, they read this list and they're like, yeah, 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 you know. But listen, a lot of, a lot of people don't know what these words really mean. 
Idolatry is not just having a wooden statue sitting on your countertop, bowing to it. That's not the only form of idolatry. Some of you idolize your cars. Some of you idolize your lovers. Hmm. Some of you idolize and worship money. Stuff. Materialism. You idolize your pride. Your accomplishments. You idolize your pedigree. Your image. Your reputation. What people think of you. You idolize the position. <laughs> you idolize just so many things that we don't realize. Some of you idolize your children. They run all over you and treat you like crap, but you idolize them. You worship the ground they walk on while they stomp you into the ground full of disrespect and contempt. Some of them actually haul off and slap or kick you and you allow it because you idolize. That is your idol. Some of you idolize your lover, like I said before, and one of the ways you know you idolize them is by the way you allow them to treat you and you still bow to them. You still uh, 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 give them homage after you've gotten that black eye. They throw you in the bed and you do what they want you to do when they want you to do it. But God can't get you to give him a moment's notice. He can't get you to give him a moment's uh, attention. But this person that's mistreating you, that's beating you, that's kicking you into the ground and cusses you out, that disrespects you in public, you allow it because you're going to prove to that man or that woman that you love them, that you're the best lover they could ever have. That's idol worship, y'all. Believe it or not. All right. So now let's move beyond idol worship. You know witchcraft. They say, the Bible says, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So even if you're not doing incantations and doing voodoo dolls and, and, and uh, casting spells and doing little witch potions and all that, if you are rebellious to a point where it's just crazy, you are committing witchcraft. It is considered as the sin of witchcraft, according to the Bible. Now, moving on, and some of you, no, I'll move back. <laughs> some of you are right there in the body of Christ, going to church every Sunday, every Saturday, every Wednesday, Thursday, whatever night you go, involved in all kind of auxiliaries, but you're also playing with crystals. And you're, 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 you're playing with uh, potions and you're playing with all kind of little goodies and incantations and stuff, trying to get that woman or that man to love you, like you, or be attracted to you. Doing all kind of stuff because you're not trusting God. Well, see, to God, witchcraft is considered an abomination. So anyway, let's move on because... In all honesty, you cannot have hot, boiling water, cold, icy cold water, put them together and expect the hot to stay hot and the cold to stay cold. You're going to end up with lukewarm. And that's the one church that God said he will spew out of his mouth, the church of Laodicea, because of being lukewarm. He said, I will spew you out of my mouth. <laughs> Just like that. So when you find yourself trying to hold God's hand and hold the devil's hand at the same time, and you think all three of you are going to skip to Malu, you're just going to skip down the street while you lick your lollipop. It ain't happening, baby. It's one or the other. And if you're doing what the devil wants you to do, that is your Lord. Whether you want to believe it or not, that is your Lord. Because when the Bible says in the Old and New Testament things that God calls an abomination, that God calls a disgrace. Guess what? If you're working against God by doing those very things, then you don't belong to God. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So 
Huh. The next thing, the next verse we're going to read. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not done with this one. Hatred. Some of you hate your brothers and sisters in Christ. They come in the room, you freeze up. You don't want to be bothered with them. You wish they would go somewhere and disappear off the, off the face of the earth. You don't like the way they look. You don't like the way they talk. You don't like the way they dress. You don't like their personality. Everything about them turns you off. And as far as you are concerned, you would be happy if they just died and just, you know, you know, did the planet a favor. Because that's the way you feel about them. That's not love. That doesn't come from the spirit of God. So you might want to go back and check with the manufacturer, that's God, and find out if you still are under warranty or have you totally left him altogether. Because you can't do both. You can't love and hate at the same time. You hear what I'm saying? In James chapter 3, it describes a fountain of water. You can't get sweet water and bitter water from the same source. So you're either going to be sweet or bitter. You make that choice. You decide. And if you can't, if you have the can't help it, you have to go to God and ask him to help you. And you have to really want the help. But if you don't really want the help and you're just doing lip service so you can be heard by your brothers and sisters in Christ, God ain't hearing you. All right, let's move on. I'm just keeping it practical and keeping it real. Hatred. Now let's go to variance. Variance is, is somebody, you ever hear the old folks say, you just contrary. That's all there is. You always contrary. Every time you turn around, you got a problem with this one or the other one. You just argumentative. You just want to fight everywhere you go. Well, guess what? Variance is one of the works of the flesh. And that's what variance is. They just, you just flare up at any given moment. Somebody bugging you, flare up. All right, the next one is emulation. Emulation is, okay, let's do an example. Jeanette is cute, Jeanette is pretty, and I like the way she looks, but I resent the fact that I know she looks better than I do. So I'm going to start buying those clothes from the store she buys them at. I'm going to buy me a car that looks just like hers, only mine's going to be a brighter color. And you're competing, but you're imitating. You're competing, but you're emulating. You're competing, but you want to look just like them. Some of you young ladies running around trying to look like Beyonce in every way you can. That's a work of the flesh, y'all. All right. Wrath. I remember one day the Lord told me, led me to a scripture in Psalms that said, forsake wrath. And when I read the words, the wrath left my heart, and I never had that issue with wrath since. Because as soon as I read it, I asked the Lord to get wrath out of my heart. And see, sometimes we think we're just impatient. Sometimes we think that we're just tired. But God knows the difference, even if we don't. Because remember, the Bible says the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And if I wanted to add an extra adjective in a parenthesis, I would also add deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? Because a lot of us, our hearts, we, we're in denial about what's in our hearts. So we're lying to ourselves. And we don't want to look at it. We don't want to deal with it. Because we feel like we got a right to feel the way we feel. No, you don't, baby. Not if you're in Christ. You do not have the right to resent your brother or sister. You do not have the right to cast judgment, to look down at someone because they don't have what you have. They don't have your intelligence, but you might not have their skill. They don't have your money, but you might not have their sweetness. Hmm, think about that. All right, moving along, strike. Well, we know what strife is. <laughs> that speaks for itself. Seditions, heresies, 
Those are all like seditions is like being a sower of discord. You say little, you know, you drop, you know how people run around dropping names. Oh, I, 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 I met so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so had lunch with me. And so, and you're naming all these movie star names so people can be impressed by the, the list, the litany of all the so-called important folks, air quote, that you have run across. Well, Sedition is the same type of thing, only in a different neighborhood. It's a whole different thing, but it's, it's the same method. Instead of name dropping to impress, you're name dropping and you're, and you're dropping little phrases, little nuances, little comments, little digs, little insinuations to stir up strife between friends. So if you got Brother Appleseed and Sister Banana Head and they checking each other out, you'll fill Brother App, you know, Brother Appleseed, you'll fill his mind with some stuff to make him doubt Sister Appleseed because in reality, you may not want to admit it, but you want Brother Appleseed for yourself. Woo! Did I say that? I think I peeped your whole card, but that's the way it goes. Or Brother Appleseed will look at Sister Banana Head. And Sister Banana Head is interested in Brother uh, Potato Head. So he's going to put doubt in her mind. Are you sure you that he's the right kind of man for you? I mean, after all, you know, look at you. You're so established, just so accomplished. And I mean, I don't know if he's the right one for you. You better pray about that. You know, I mean, I... I I, I saw some of the people he hangs with, and I, I don't know. You know, that man might have been doing prison ministry, might have been doing outreach. But he's going to paint a dark picture so that she will lose interest in him and start taking notice of what a wonderful gift of, from God he is. See, that's being a sower of discord. That's casting suspicion, casting doubt on another person's reputation. For those of you who don't know, in case you're doing that, that's why I'm um, breaking these words down. Because a lot of times people will read the list and they move on. But some of you need to know what you're doing. All right. 21. Envying. Murders. Some of you have murder in your heart. You do. I remember I told the Lord years ago when I was first saved. I said, Lord, I know you want me to forgive these folks. I had a list. I had, a, I had an elite list of the folks that I wished would die. And I confessed it to the Lord. And I said, Lord, if they died today or tomorrow, I would dance on their, on their grave. I don't want to forgive them. And yes, I wish they were dead. But I read your word and I saw that you said, if we don't forgive, then neither will you forgive us. So if, you, if it's that important to you, I can't forgive them. I can't. I don't want to. So I'm asking. I'm, I'm being real. Now, listen, I was being real. Some of you won't even be real about it. I said, Lord, if you want me, this is the beginning of a miracle. If you want me to forgive that much, then I'm asking you to give me the ability because I can't. I was thinking about the men who raped me. I was thinking about the man who slapped me. I was thinking about a relative who molested me. I was thinking, I had a list, baby. Uh, it, was, it was in gold, 24 karat gold, unless there's anything better. Yeah. So what God did was a miracle. He made me pass. He made me cross the path of every single person that I had on that list. And when I saw them, I saw the hatred that I had in my heart wasn't even there. It was non-existent. I couldn't help but smile. I said, oh my God, where did it go? Why? Because I was honest with him. And I asked him to put in me what I didn't have the ability to do. And God did just that. All right. Now, that's what the Bible, when Jesus says, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Well, guess what? The more truthful you are with God, the more freedom you will get from him 
every time you ask for his help. It's one thing to tell him how you feel. It's another thing to ask him for his supernatural help. Because when God helps you, baby, he takes you so far beyond your own abilities. It'll blow your mind. So start asking for help more often. Humble yourself. Acknowledge that you need the help in the first place. Acknowledge that you tow up from the floor. I love that expression. And God will help you. Oh, he will. All right. He said, no good thing will I withhold from them that love me. No good thing. All right. So let's move on to envyings, murders, drunkenness that speaks for itself, revelings, yeah, that's reveling in your nonsense. You're basking in it. You're celebrating your mess and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not, didn't say might not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Ain't that a trip? <laughs> but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Now, you know what's nice about gentleness? There are two ways you can say something. I can look at Lynn. And say, uh, Lynn, um, have you ever thought of maybe trying to do this or do that? It, it might make things a little easy on you. You know, it might make it easy for you to accomplish those goals that you have. You know, you might want to look into that. You might find there's a lot of help there. Now I'm done. That's a gentle suggestion, right? Or I can put it the other way. <clears throat> Lynn, who you think you are? You think you're too good to get help? Girl, you need help. I'm going to tell you right now, you are messed up. You need help. You're doing a lousy job with that. And if you knew what you were doing, it wouldn't be so jacked up. It wouldn't be such a failure. You're a failure. Look at you. You can't do anything right. Uh, okay. <laughs> now, which one would you rather hear? Now, I'm contrasting so you get what I'm saying about or what the Bible is saying. <laughs> All right. So now we've got gentleness, goodness, and faith. Now let's move to 23 because there's a magic word in there that I love. We've got meekness. That's that nice, tenderness, quiet spirit. Uh, unassuming, so to speak. And then you've got temperance. Hmm. Temperance is the diaper. To your behind that the Holy Spirit is to your emotional outburst. That's right. The Holy Spirit will catch you. The Holy Spirit will check you. The Holy Spirit will stop you from making a fool of yourself and showing your behind in public. The Holy Spirit will stop you from hurting others. Why? Because the love of God is governing your motives, governing your actions, governing your words. So temperance is another word for self-control. Self-control, which means you don't really have the can't help it. If you can go on a job and do the whole job, be in your boss's face all day and not utter one cuss word, you can do it for God all day, every day. How's that? That's right. You can stand in front of the judge in a courtroom for two or three hours and you can testify, test the lie, whatever you're doing, but you know you better not say cuss words in that place. And you mind your P's and Q's and not one mumbling word comes out of your mouth. If you can do it for the judge, for the courtroom, for one to three hours, you can do it for God for life. He's worth it, y'all. Self-control comes, the power of self-control comes from the Holy Spirit. That's why it's considered one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You hear me? 
So when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have no excuse. The problem I think that some of you have is that you never got filled with the Holy Ghost. You got filled with something. Some of you are just full of it, but you're not full of the Holy Ghost. All right. So now we got 24. Oh, and it says in 23, meekness, temperance against such. There is no law. I remember when I was in the hospital, I want to share this so that you understand the Bible, the, the, the opposite of temperance in the Bible is incontinence. And for those of you who work with convalescent homes, for those of you who are caregivers, who have been nurses, aides or whatever in the medical industry, you know what incontinence is. So for those of you who are adults and you've been potty trained, you've got temperance when it comes to your bladder. When it comes to your movements, you've got temperance, that's self-control. But when it comes to some of you who have had damage done to your body, or there's a problem, maybe you were raised too long in a diaper, or you've been whatever, or you've had mental issues, you may be incontinent, which means, or you may have a weak bladder, or you may have had surgery that caused problems. So you may have to wear a diaper, an adult diaper, because you have lack of self-control. So if it gets ready to blow, baby, you're going to blow and you better have that diaper on. If it gets ready to roll and it gets ready to pour, you better have that diaper on because you don't have the control to hold it until you get to the restroom. So that is the same way some of us are emotionally. Some of us do not have self-control with our emotions. Some of us will not use self-control when it comes to yielding to temptation, when it comes to giving in to our temper, when it comes to being annoyed, when it comes to being intolerant, when it comes to gambling, when it comes to eating, when it comes to drinking, when it comes to buy, 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 shot to your drop. Some of you do not have self-control in all these areas. Some or all of them. And when you don't have the control, you need the power of the Holy Spirit working within you before you ruin your own life. See, Satan doesn't have to destroy you. He doesn't have to steal, kill, and destroy. When you have not opted to go to God to get the self-control you need that you don't presently have. All right. Now let's go to verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Mm -hmm. So they that are in Christ, that means that the same way Jesus was crucified on the cross, you have chosen to crucify your rights. So you have a right to live holy and you have a right to live a sinful life. You have a right to use self-control, temperance, self-discipline, and you also have a right to let a rip, baby, do whatever you want to do. Let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, you have the right to live either way because God gave us freedom of choice. But one has benefits and the other has nothing but consequences, and I mean bad ones. So I'm trying to take my time in through here because I know a lot of people don't understand the Bible and I want to make sure that we break this baby down. <laughs> Dr. D says D-O-W-N down. Anyway, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. That means you have chosen to crucify your lusts. Kill it, baby. Mortify the deeds of the flesh. Kill it. You have chosen to crucify the affections, those things you like. How are you going to have an affection if you don't like it? There are some sins that are fun, baby. We'd be lying if we said it wasn't. Very enjoyable. Hey, now. But it doesn't mean that you have the can't help it if you're indulging. It means you have relinquished your right to crucify the affections. <laughs> you have chosen 
to nurture those affections, feed those affections. Because, baby, listen, what you starve will die, but what you feed will thrive. And some of you have the can't help it's because you've been feeding it, feeding it, feeding it. And you refuse to starve it because you don't want to suffer. But when you suffer in the flesh, you have ceased from sin. That's what the Bible says. Moving right along. It's a choice, y'all. Verse 25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. I hope you got the point. I hope it made sense to you because sometimes we think that we just hear a bunch of do's and don'ts, but see, there are reasons. If you put a baby in a playpen, you're not putting the baby in the playpen to imprison it. You're not putting a baby in the playpen to be a killjoy, to incarcerate it. No, you're protecting that baby from things in the room that you know with its immature mind, it's going to want to get into stuff. And the stuff it's going to want to get into is going to hurt the baby, will endanger the baby. Well, guess what? We are God's babies, y'all. And he is trying so hard to protect us. Some of us hard heads, some of us knuckle heads, some of us dunderheads. But the bottom line, God still loves us and he's trying to protect us in spite of ourselves. <laughs> so remember that whatever limits are being placed on you by God is for your good because God is for you, not against you. He knows the plans he has for you, plans to bless you, not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. He's not a deadbeat dad, y'all. He's our father, which art in heaven. Remember that. That's why we have the spirit of Christ living in us. Christ is the son of the living God. So he cries, Abba, Father. And we, with the spirit of Christ living in us, cry, Abba, Father, likewise. Amen. Ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. And for those of you who have not yet given your hearts to the Lord or who have strayed down some of those paths of the works of the flesh, some of those paths of the affections and lusts of the flesh, recommit your life, rededicate your life to the Lord and ask him, to give you a new start, to clean your slate, to forgive you, cleanse you, fill you with his Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm giving you a moment to pray that prayer. I want you to pray it your way. I'm not going to feed you the words. When you mean it, you don't need somebody to feed it. Now, the other thing I want for those of you who want to give your heart to the Lord for the first time, I will help you with that one. I ask you to repeat what I'm saying. It's not a script. It's just to help guide you. You can fill in all the blanks, whatever else you want to say. Because God is a conversational God. He's not just standing there waiting for a script, for a liturgy. Father, we ask you right now to hear the prayers of the people that want to give their hearts to you. And I pray the prayer the same way as if I'm giving my heart to you for the first time. Lord, I don't get it. I don't understand this whole thing. I'm not quite sure I'm convinced that you're you and Jesus is who he is. And I don't quite understand. I don't get the whole picture. But Lord, if, if you would just give me time to get understanding and I'll know as I follow on to know, then I ask you, Lord, to forgive me. I need a change. I'm sick of myself. I'm sick of life. I'm sick of stuff. I'm sick of the games. And I'm asking you, Lord, there's got to be something more to life than this. I'm tired of being empty. I'm tired of feeling useless and worthless and purposeless. And I ask you, Lord, to show me what I'm here for. I'm asking you to give me a new start. And I need your help because I'm so messed up. I need the power of your Holy Spirit working in me. 
And I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I'm asking you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to remove all of my hurts, to begin an inner healing process because my mind is twisted, my heart is warped, and I am a bundle of mess. I'm a bundle of nerves. I'm a bundle of emotional scars. I ask you to save my soul. I accept your son Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Help me understand what that really means, Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for filling me with your Holy Spirit, for healing me, cleansing me, delivering me from the works of darkness. I renounce all forms of witchcraft. I renounce every form of occult, of occult um, actions that I've been involved with and any of my ancestors have been involved with. And I ask you to cleanse, purify, purge me from all sin. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I'm yours, you're mine. Thank you, Lord. Show me who I can go to to help disciple me and walk me through understanding your word. Help me, Lord. Send me help. Send me the right people to help me live this life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you. Amen. All right. I felt that, so I know that God really wanted to reach out to some folks because, you know, I don't do that all the time. But I felt led of God that some of you really needed to rededicate or dedicate your life for the first time. God bless you. God keep you. God calls his face to shine upon you and give you peace.